Hello Tudesers, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, I'm sorry for the scary close-up. I've literally got a bench that's full <laughs> uh, of every thing of every description. I'm not even going to go into them all because uh, there's too many to mention. Uh, today's video, we're looking at some 1 in 35 scale figures from Mini Art. Uh, it's not a review. I'm painting these for Jason over at uh, Model Kit Stuff. He approached me before Christmas, uh, in fact, before Telford, and uh, said, you know, he was building, he was going to be building a Tiger tank, uh, a Ryefield early production Tiger, I think, you know, one of those that first served in around Leningrad, I believe. Uh, he um, he said, you know, obviously he can do figures, but my fi he's, he's said that my figures would be better than his. Uh, would I like to collaborate on that side of it with him? Uh, and I said yes I'm regretting that now <laughs> no offence to Jason uh, yeah um, one because I've just got a lot of stuff on but but two uh, I enjoy painting the figures and what I've found I've not done a load of mini art figures uh, but they all the ones I've done is they've always been extremely hard to to <laughs> Then they're not particularly great fitting, in my opinion. Uh, very nice faces on them, very nice faces in plastic, resin, whatever. Uh, but you have to do a lot of filling on them. And when you're when you're actually placing them uh, together, gluing them together, uh, they are so uneven in the ta attachment points. You know, obviously the gaps need so much filling. Uh, it, it's um, I don't say not enjoyable, but especially when you're doing for somebody else, you're <laughs> you're trying to make sure that they don't look particularly up in the um, armatures. You know, they don't look particularly out of proportion or whatever when you're filling. Uh, I've done two figures. Uh, the, the 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 scariest part for me was, I mean, Jason said he was um, he was having trouble getting these figures, particular figures he wanted, and uh, he's having trouble getting them. So it took a few weeks for for them to arrive. Uh, but he got them and got them down to me uh, and he said it was obviously a tank crew uh, five figures, a tiger tank and uh, when they got there they're the ones, they're a set that the three of the guys are uh, cleaning out the barrel on the on the, the, the tank so they've got the push rod down there, you know, it screws together and they're cleaning that out cleaning the bore out and uh, another two figures casually posed. Well the casually posed ones, yes they needed a lot of filling but you could put those together, paint them up and I don't think they look too bad. I'm not a box art painter, I'm not that good but you know they look okay. Uh, but I'll just hold one up here. These guys, uh, I'll take a close, we'll take a close look in a bit. This is one of the cleaning guys. Uh, when you haven't got the tank in front of you I must admit, my heart sunk a bit when I saw the barrel guard. You know, they were going to be cleaning out the barrel because you've got to try. And one, I haven't got all the barrel parts anyway. Um, there was one piece of rod that, because Jason had broke the the, uh, the kit up and sent me the bits that he thought that I'd need. Uh, I'd only got one piece of barrel cleaning rod. Uh, and what you need to do is obviously you're trying to marry three guys up one there's another guy at the end which is over there another guy at the end holding the end and these two are more or less guiding it and giving added strength you know to push and pull the, the barrel brush and the, the worm debris corkscrew debris to clean it out uh, and you've got three figures that don't want to put together you know they don't want to stick together properly huge gaps now that you can't do them all in one go you, you, you even what I find with these mini art figures I have to put the waist the two legs together first and well, in fact it'd be easier to show it on the overhead camera which I'll do in a minute but yeah trying to get three figures in line get their arms in line when there's no there is no natural this is where the arms go no problem I've, I haven't got an exact diameter wire that I needed. I've drilled the holes in the hands out as wide as I could to give Jason a bit of room. But Jason, 
looking at the camera. Uh, if you can get a barrel rod together in these three guys, you might have to put one guy slightly standing on a, you know, shelve the ground up. You're going to have to do a lot of mooching around to get these three figures to to line up. Uh, I think that was the, probably the fall down in this project. Is <laughs> we haven't got a tank to actually marry the the line up, and we haven't got three figures that are decent enough. <laughs> <laughs> that that will more or less the arms are in place to take a straight line that you don't the, the problem with these are use so much variables in getting those arms and i've just run another piece of white wire down thinner piece of floris wire down because that's all i've got i haven't got anything else my, my other wires are the too thick um and that is <laughs> that is bending all over the shop so how are we going to get a straight a straight line on those? You can't open the hands up anymore without blowing the hands out. So yeah, uh, we'll just see. Let's go down to the bench and take a look. Right, guys, thanks for joining me at the bench. Uh, these are our two painted figures. I'll be careful because this guy hasn't. He's a bit shiny because this one hasn't had a, a matte varnish on him yet. Uh, but that's our one fella like the commander I've given him a civilian sorry about I've got to be careful because it's got to, it's got mini put on the end but um, I've given him a civilian you often saw him civilian wearing these brown leather civilian belts I went for a civilian belt uh, just because I thought it would break the black up a bit more uh, I didn't get a pistol uh, with the there is supposed to be a pistol on there I mean whether Jason paints it and adds it on afterwards or just leaves it off uh, but there is supposed to be a, a you know like a, a Wolfer, Volta pistol, uh, but uh, it wasn't there. Um, I've done the pink Waffenarb, is it Waffenarb? Uh, around the around the collar, some did have it, some didn't. I just again just to you know I saw wartime uh, photos and some did have it and some didn't. Uh, I've got to put a couple of little silver buttons on that. I've just noticed which I forgot to do. Uh, but yeah, that's our commander, and this guy looks like he's you know reaching his pocket for maybe a, a matches or a box of fags or something. Uh, the rest of the guys are all in this. You've either got the field grey trousers, uh, and I'm just uh, Jason had sent me some cutouts of the the box, you know, showing the, what they were what they were painted. So I've gone with with obviously that. So uh, he's got like the field grey trousers on. Uh, but um, uh, you know the faces are fairly decent. Um, I wasn't that that one wasn't as good actually. The commander says bare-headed, unfortunately. But I thought the guys on the pushing the barrel uh, that they they weren't too bad F faces wise. I didn't think they were too bad. You know, there's enough to go on there. See a lot of filling. Now what I do with my filling is. Now, I, I use a lot of mini put. I still have all the like the magic sculpts in that, but I quite prefer mini put. Uh, let me just put this down for a second. Um, make myself a little sausage like that at mini put. Put it in the obviously wherever you've got to fill it. Uh, I use a rubber scraper and scraper like putty shaper I should say yes this is an artist's one it's giant I picked them up for about 60p about eight years ago and I'm still using them I really do need to get some pocker proper fitting uh, you know small figure ones but the tips of these work has been working for me for years but I will get some one day uh, but yeah I uh, use some uh, IPA put IPA in a small bottle uh, put it in a a milk bottle top lid or whatever other lids you want to use uh, and IPA evaporates a lot quicker than water so uh, and it's also better for cleaning up and I will smooth out what, what I want to do uh, if you've got figures that are quite uh, you know there's a lot of rockles in the in the uh, the shirts or trousers remember to try and follow it when you're doing a crease trying to just follow a bit of you know getting your getting your not your figure too smooth um you know try and put some some you know you've joined up the the creases uh, in the in the in the fabric 
Uh, what I'll do is I'll put a first lot on. Uh, the, the necks on these don't always fit absolutely brilliantly, so you need to wedge some in there. Uh, I then clean it up with some soft, well I actually go over with some more IPA later on and smooth it out a bit more. Uh, let that all dry off. Uh, next day come back or whenever I want to uh, put some smooth sandpaper on there. Just some paper. Uh, sometimes I use this stuff, I, I buy off cuts. Uh, they come in squares, I can't, we can actually. Uh, I buy these off cuts, it only comes in uh, the, one, the one size but it gets smoother as you use it as well uh, and that will conform to the curves I just cut bits off when I'm using my models or on these you know and work on them that way uh, rather than sanding sticks because you'll just go take off everything flat uh, but as you can see there's a fair bit of um, bit of work involved in these when they're together they are really nice figures you know they they you know they 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 look nice when they're done but there's a lot of work and when they're more casual figures like the two I've just shown that's not so, so bad because there's you know if you'd have had five tank crews sat around in casual poses you know chatting playing cards at the scat and that was it scat they call it uh the the card game uh but you know when 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 you're doing that type of casual pose, it's fine. Um, but when you've got three guys, um, when you've got three guys that all need to be in line more or less, uh, it, it's I'm just starting to work on him. Yeah, it, it's it's a nightmare because the torsos. Let's get this guy that. In fact, let's put this one away so I don't get my fingerprints all over him. Uh, the the legs join obviously to the sides uh, they never as you can see no matter how much you try you can't keep the the the, the top the the flat top of the waist completely flat either uh, you really have to mooch around with your torso and everything just to to fit it in where you you want it to go uh, all the time obviously that's fighting you and slipping off and you know and it's you know and that's hot glue on those as well um, just to at least tack them into place first and you can see the faces are lovely I, I like the faces a lot and there's not a lot of mould on to, to particularly clear up that one's fitted not too bad around the neck um, in fact this one's probably the best out of the whole lot actually for, for gaps I mean that would be if I had that gap on most other figures I wouldn't be that, that fussed um, but some of the others have been even the guys the two casual guys there was a you know some blooming big you know, and you have to. It might look well, Gav. You haven't set you centered it. No, I haven't because I'm trying to. I've been having to fight trying to get arms to to line up, and then as I say, you're hoping that uh, even though I put a piece of wire down, I couldn't. I didn't have a a, a big enough piece uh, to do it. And even if I did, um, trying to get the three figures all in one, even though you can. You know, soften them up with more glue and try and move them around. It's been an absolute uh, uh, struggle to say the least. So, Jason, I really hope you can, you know, you can actually work with these. Um, you you are even putting them on the ground. Uh, you can roughly see where well, you can't really see top down, but to to try and get the whichever side you put them. Um, with the height difference, yeah, yeah it's uh, it's not been good that. This one isn't so bad that I'm just started to work on. Um, you know, I made sure last night that I'd, I'd try to get, obviously, the, the hands uh, in position that they'll they'll take the end of the, the barrel cleaning rod. Uh, and I've tried him up against with the other two in place, uh, and he's not too bad, but the, 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 the two actual you know the other two guys. You know they're going to be a, a right pain to, for Jason to try and get get the barrel cleaning rod uh, in position. Um, again, there was a as you can see, there's a fair to side. That isn't just been smoothed out. That was a big big old gap there. Um, you know that that it's just what it is. You know you just got to work with it. As I say, when they're together, they you know they are nice figures. I, I, all I'm saying to you is beware. Don't expect these to stick together, or, or not the ones that I've been. I've probably done about three boxes, different figures, and I set theirs. 
don't expect them just to drop onto each other and arms to fit absolutely snugly. Uh, they won't. Not the ones in my, the ones that I've tried. Um, you know, you, you will have to work them around. Uh, I use the, the usual Tamiya Extra Thin or even the or Tamiya Thin or Extra Thin uh, using that hot weld action just to more or less tack them into place but I don't want them completely solid straight away like don't use super glue because you'll, you you really need to move them around until you're 100% happy with with uh, you know what you're you're looking at as I say then start using whatever putty you use uh, to, to I don't like using like the I've got some here I was using on my model the other day uh, I don't like using plastic putty uh, and things like that because it doesn't it's really more for, for thinner thinner gaps than that and I want it more solid and something I can work with to make it look more part of the, the figure so as I say I use uh, a lot of people use the white mini put if you're going to use mini puts I use just use the red standard um, roll it out if you're going to roll it on your desk try and get something I don't know anything from a piece of tape to roll it on top of a piece of plastic so what I'm saying is all of us we work on our desks and it's quite easy to pick up lots of bits in your in your and I've done it plenty of times <laughs> uh, in your in your fellow you know uh, um, and then it, it doesn't always especially if it's a tiny bit of fraction like tiny piece of metal or plastic you ain't it's going to be blooming hard to sand it and work with it so once you've done all your you know you if you are going to use your IPA or water on this um, once you've done your original smoothing I usually leave it overnight or it might be a couple of days before I come back to it uh, I'll then give it a rub down uh, clean it off uh, I, I usually either just whether I put it under the water tap or um, just get a, a cotton bud with some some IPA on it and I'll go over it again and then uh, sometimes they nearly all need it I then make us like a, a paste out of out of the uh, milliput so I put a Milly put in here uh, and I uh, just press you know press something like that into the middle of it and then and then I uh, I then uh, put some uh, IPA round and clean it uh, and put it in as a slurry uh, to smooth places out so guys that sounds like my wife's just come back with the pop so I better go before the noise starts look after yourselves uh, hope you enjoyed this little little look at these guys go over I'll put a link to Jason's channel go over and check him out uh, he's a nice bloke uh, he does a lot of lot of good stuff so look after yourselves and we'll catch each other very very soon on another video